Hi guys, welcome back. Tan here again. Um, welcome back to this review from uh, CigarsIndia.in, uh, India's largest and trusted online pulp retailer of cigars. Uh, today I have the pleasure of uh, reviewing a very interesting uh, brand. There are some in that brand which I have to say are undisputedly my favourite smokes. Depending on the time of the day, they certainly are my favourite smokes. I know I said in an earlier review that I had a liking for certain varieties like Juan Lopez, but uh, the Edmundo in this range is just remarkable. So hopefully that gives you a clue as to what it is. It's the Monte Cristo range of uh, cigars, and uh, today I'll be reviewing the Monte Cristo number no. 4. Uh, in a previous review, I suggested this cigar as a smoke to try if you were new to cigars because it offers a lot for its size and in that context, the size is one, the other thing is the price and uh, the complexities of the flavours and aroma. So it gives out a lot in, for, for its size and its uh, price and that's why I think it would be good to review this so that if you're new to cigars you get to try some of the or pick up some of the characteristics that I'm picking up or your friends or colleagues may have also picked up but you may not be aware of and which you just want to try. So this as I said was the Monte Cristo number no. 4. It's a 42 ring gauge by 5 inches in length. Uh, perhaps in a later review I'll give you the explanation of what a ring gauge is and how it's actually calculated. For this one though, we'll just be enjoying this smoke. Um, it retails between 650 rupees to 750 rupees uh, at cigarsindia.in and uh, let's uh, try it out. This company was actually set up in 1935 by a guy called Alonso Menendez who bought the Particulares factory and the lesser known uh, Byron brand. Immediately after that he created a new name which was the Monte Cristo brand or Monte Cristo factory. The name of the brand was inspired by a novel and it's actually one of my favourite novels, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Uh, that's why I like the Edmondo so much. Also named after Edmond Dantes, who's the uh, hero in the Count of Monte Cristo. Now, the reason why they actually chose the name Monte Cristo was, as the cigar rollers, the torchidors, were actually rolling the cigars, they have a reader who sits in front of them and actually reads to them. You have to remember, this is in the 1930s. The television wasn't uh, readily available. Uh, they may have had the radio, but uh, they like to read or have things read to them as they're working. So the, uh, the reader, I can't remember the Cuban name for that, but uh, the readers would either read the daily news and newspapers or novels and stories and uh, various other literature. And uh, this would prove to be very popular with the cigar rollers, so hence the name of the factory, Monte Cristo. Let me light the cigar. This has proved to be one of the most popular smokes in the world. Of course you have Romeo and Juliet, but Monte Cristo in its range, and especially the Monte Cristo number no. 4, is one of the biggest sellers globally. Uh, for, the, for the reasons I've actually mentioned earlier. So the company has some history and it's an internationally and globally recognized brand with, uh, with a reputation for quality and a pleasant characteristic for the smoke. They launched several new varieties post the revolution and also from about the 1990s onwards. Um, Cuba has been experimenting significantly but this is one of the uh, older varieties which or the classic, one of the classics in the range which have been there for a very long time, been in existence for a very long time. Now, 
this is, I've had a number of people, or cigar aficionados, actually rating this as a miraculous blend, which uh, I'll, I'll explain a bit later. But certain other points um, I just want to mention immediately. As I said, just let it settle in now. It's being described as tangy uh, by a number of uh, cigar reviewers and reviews. If that word tangy describes something that's not very harsh, but something that's not very bland either, something with a bit of uh, punch to it, but not overpowering, then I would tend to agree with them. It does have that kind of, uh, there is a pungent element to it, but it's no way uh, pronounced. I just say it's nice, nice middle, middle of the road, not too pungent, not too light. When I do this, I'm just uh, rearranging the, massaging the cigar, rearranging it a bit so that it opens up a bit more. The quality is uh, perfect, exceptional, well, very well kept by the guys at cigarsindia.in. But just wanted to get a bit more smoke coming through. So one description is tangy. What I can certainly get from this is uh, bean flavours. Beans as in cocoa beans, vanilla and certainly coffee. The vanilla is less pronounced but I'd certainly say that the coffee and the cocoa are certainly there. I think that uh, vanilla character may come in a bit later, maybe a hint of sweetness but uh, I think the cigar needs to settle down first. One famous, well, relatively famous uh, cigar aficionado described this as the miraculous blend. Why did he call it miraculous? For uh, two main reasons, I think, or from my understanding of it. One, you're guaranteed to enjoy it whether you're a novice or whether you're a seasoned smoker. And two, you will enjoy it whatever your smoking culture is and wherever in the world you come, come from. Of course, there will be exceptions, but generally uh, he viewed it as a miraculous uh, blend because there is such a love of these cigars globally. It was also said that this cigar was never boring. Even if you smoked it every day or however many times a day, there'd always be something interesting coming out of it which uh, would not disappoint you in any way. So, this cigar certainly offers a lot. Let the cigar settle in now and get back to you at the next stage. Hi guys, it's settled in a bit now and I'm certainly getting some sweet characteristics. I'm not getting the vanilla, I'm getting some cream coming out of it. In terms of the sweetness, um, it tends to be more of the chocolate and the uh, cocoa variety rather than the, sorry, cocoa and the coffee variety rather than the uh, vanilla variety. But then, you know, th this, there's still some more in the stick to go. But I am getting some, some, some kind of subtle sweet quality and a creaminess to it. I've been reliably informed that these uh, are really brilliant cigars for a number of reasons, uh, two among them. One is that they're very good to smoke when new, relatively new, and they don't require very much aging. About three years and you have a decent smoke. Five years can be described as brilliant. So if you can get the aged cigars, you won't have anything better. So that was one bracket. If you still want the bean flavours from this to come through, the coffee, the cocoa, the vanilla, um, you should ideally keep it and smoke it between about five to six years. After eight, between eight and ten years, it uh, tends to fade a bit and becomes a bit bland. 
Um, again, there's another theory which maybe I'll discuss uh, in, a, in a future review that uh, some aficionados have said that cigars have periods of sickness and periods of uh, blooming, you could say. So within these certain periods of time, from the, the time the cigar is actually made to the time it's actually smoked, you may want to try and keep it within those uh, years. So I gave a rough idea about this is good. If you want five to six years, you get the bean flavors coming through. Between eight to 10 years, you're looking, it tends to drop down a bit. It's still maturing. It's still developing its character. So the next stage after the eight to 10, you're looking at about 20 years where they develop delicate flavors coming through. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, I've been informed that uh, between 40 and 50 years, uh, that's when the fantastic uh, qualities of the cigar actually come through. But uh, don't hold that to me. Don't hold me to that because um, unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity of smoking such delectable cigars. Hopefully, one day in the future, I will. So, for the beginner smoker, the novice. They're going to get a lot from this, or you're going to get a lot from this. Uh, a lot of complexity. I, get, I told you, or mentioned in uh, earlier videos, that uh, this is a journey, this is an experience, and that's what it should be, that's what I feel it should be. So this certainly doesn't disappoint. It's taking you on, nice, on a nice winding road, seeing some nice pretty scenery, and uh, just an enjoyable uh, experience. Getting a bit spicier. Hi guys, uh, back again. I did detect some changes. It got a bit spicier uh, in between, and uh, there was a slight green to it, but that's faded away nicely. It's it's uh, picked up in strength quite noticeably. That creamy quality is gone. The sweetness no, the sweetness has uh, been subdued by the uh, spicy quality of the smoke, but then that's to be expected because uh, we're coming towards the end of it and uh, the residual uh, carbonized particles and the oils which have accumulated as the cigars smoke down we just indicate that it would become sp uh, more pungent. Nothing unpleasant about it, but it was a gradual increase uh, in, the, in the potency, you could say, of the smoke. And uh, again, the best time, if you want to age this or keep this for some time, between, uh, I just made a note on this, just bear with me, uh, between five to eight years and you get the flavors of the bean the, uh, that is the coffee the, the, the cocoa and possibly the vanilla if you can pick that up uh, but you certainly can get some sweetness so there we have it it's picking up and I leave it uh, for there I'll come back to you in a short one to see if there are any other changes towards the end of the smoke. Hi guys, back again. Um, as I said, the cigar's picked up. It's spicy, it's pungent, but in a pleasant way. Uh, I think this will go towards the end now like this. So I just want to wrap up by, by, by saying that in the earlier review I made about uh, the experience and what cigars to get, I would certainly go with this as a beginner's uh, smoke because of the uh, the offering it gives you at, at such a decent price point and size so you're going to enjoy it and it's a nice introduction to cigars than having an unpleasant one and thinking oh I don't want to smoke another cigar again so uh, just to finish off uh, the price point is between I think 650 to uh, 750. Seven, 650 rupees to 750 rupees good size good experience all around. Available 
with the guys at cigarsindia.in, the trusted and largest on online retailer of uh, Premier Cigars. So, hope you like this review and if you like us, please uh, put a like on uh, our YouTube page or a like on Twitter and, uh, and uh, Facebook as well. And if you do want any more advice or you have any more comments or suggestions, please feel free to uh, mention that to the guys at cigarsindia.in. They're more than happy to help and provide guidance on your cigar exploration. So hopefully we'll see you again shortly.